All right, this lecture is going to be very informal. I haven't done any prep work because I just want to walk you through my thought process and show you how I approach a data modeling problem. So here on Draw.io, I'm going to create a conceptual model using entity relationship diagrams. So what entities or concepts do we have in this domain? We have the concept of flight, passenger or traveler, aircraft, airline, airport, and so on. These are the concepts that I immediately see in this domain. So let's add an entity for each. Here's the first one. I'm going to call this passenger. You could also call it traveler. It doesn't really matter. Here's another entity. We're going to call this flight. So a passenger books a flight. Now let's add a relationship between these two entities. Here we have a bunch of relationship options, like one to many, one to one. At this point, we don't really care about the type of these relationships. We just want to add a relationship between our entities. We'll clarify each relationship when we build our logical model. So for simplicity, I'm going to use a many-to-many -many relationship for all relationships in this demo. Here's one. I'm going to add this between passenger and flight. And then I'm going to add a label to this relationship, books. So passenger, books, flights. Now let's add a few attributes to these entities. What do we need to know about each passenger? Well, based on the requirements, we need to know their name. That's the only thing we need to know about each passenger. Now in the real world, we also need to know their email, their address, uh, their date of birth, and maybe other attributes. But none of those attributes exist in the requirements I have given you. So we want to stick to the requirements. We don't want to model the universe or the real world. We want to do enough modeling to solve a business problem. So name is sufficient for now. What do we need to know about our flights? Each flight has a number, so let's add that here. We need to know when a flight is going to happen. So here we need a date time attribute. Well, more accurately, we need to have two date times. One is the departure date time. The other is the arrival date time. So let's rename this to departure date time and arrival date time. Also, let me zoom in a little bit more. Okay, that is better. All right, what else do we need to know about a flight? We need to know its duration. So let's add that here. We also need to know the distance. So in the example I've given you, the flight between Los Angeles and San Francisco is just over 200 miles. That is the distance. We also need to know the airline that operates a flight. Now we can add the airline as an attribute here, or we can model airline as a separate entity and then add a relationship between flight and airline. That is more of a normalization thing because we don't want to repeat the airline's name in the flight. But at this level, we're still doing our conceptual modeling. So we don't have to worry about normalization. We can always come back to it later. So let's get the basics right. What else do we need to know about each flight? We need to know the departing and arriving airports. Now, each airport has a bunch of attributes. One of them is YATA code, and that is the three-letter code that you see in this example. For example, LAX is short for Los Angeles International Airport. So airport is really a separate entity because it has its own attributes. So I'm going to add another entity here. Let's call that airport. Now, this airport has a YATA code. It also has a descriptive name like Los Angeles International Airport. It's located in a city and state and country. Now, technically, we don't have country in our example. So this is actually out of scope. We only want to focus on city and state. If you want to support international flights, we can always come back and modify this model. So this is the airport. Now we need to add a relationship between flight and airport as well. Once again, I'm going to add a many-to-many -many relationship. This is purely for simplicity. We'll refine the top of these relationships later when we build a logical model. So let's add this here and attach it to the flight as well. All right. Now, Let's give this relationship a label, departs slash arrives at. Now here on page one, we see the ticket number for each passenger. Where should we put that attribute? It doesn't belong to a passenger, neither does it belong to the flight. It's actually an attribute of the relationship between these two entities. So it's part of the booking. So I'm going to add a new entity here. 
let me move this around and put it on the top that is a little bit better unfortunately we have a limitation of space here please bear with me so i'm going to call this booking this booking is going to have a ticket number it also has a price that you can see on page three that is the amount each passenger pays for a given flight now in the real world we also need to keep track of when this person made this booking so the booking entity should also have a daytime attribute but again we don't see it in the requirements at this point so i don't want to complicate this model by adding things that we don't need yet so here's the price attribute now on page two you can see that both these tickets are in economy class so that is another attribute of this booking let's call that flight class now we could also call this booking ticket so we could say a passenger purchases or books a ticket for the flight that is more of a naming issue conceptually we have an entity like ticket or booking that has these attributes ticket number the price the passenger paid and the flight class which can be economy premium economy first class and so on so now let's delete this relationship and recreate it through the ticket entity so once again i'm going to add a many-to-many -many relationship this looks a little bit funky sorry about that all right here's our relationship let's attach one end to the ticket the other end to the passenger that looks good so we can add a label here like purchases or books in my opinion they both work but sometimes these words have different meanings in the heads of domain experts so you should always check with them the whole point of this conceptual model is to make sure that we developers or data modelers and domain experts are on the same page we use the same language the same words so for now i'm just going to call this purchases now let me refine this relationship it doesn't look properly attached here okay that's better so here's our ticket entity now let's add another relationship from ticket to the flight so one more time all right so here's the relationship between the ticket and the flight let's give it a label so a ticket is issued for a given flight now there's one more attribute that we need to add to the ticket and that is the confirmation number so let's add that here as well confirmation number all right so here's our conceptual model with these four entities based on what we know about this problem right now next we're going to build a logical model based on this conceptual model 